To the casual observer, it would appear like Waymo, with their level four capable fleet, is ahead of Tesla when it comes to autonomous driving technology. However, if you dig a little bit deeper and you take a more analytical approach to comparing each system, Tesla's system is far more capable. And with the future release of version 12 of their FSD software, I believe Tesla's system could soon leapfrog Waymo's. Stick around as I compare Tesla's full self-driving technology to Waymo's and show you what I mean. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Waymo currently operates a level four driverless taxi fleet in the Phoenix, Arizona area, and they are about to roll out the same driverless service in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Austin, Texas is next on their list and will become Waymo's fourth major ride hail city, although Austin will likely start out with safety drivers as they have done in other markets to start out. On the flip side, Tesla's full self-driving software is still technically a level two driver's assistance system and requires an attentive human driver to be ready to take over at all times. So Waymo appears to have the upper hand with their driverless fleet. However, beyond just this surface level view, who is the real leader in autonomous driving technology? To start this comparison, I first wanna start with the geographic limitations of Waymo's system. When I discuss levels of automation, like level two or level four, like we're discussing in this video, I'm referring back to SAE International's uh, descriptions of autonomous driving technology. And SAE International has created a great chart that really makes the differences between the levels of automation very easy to understand. For example, with level four autonomous driving, the car is in control, a human driver is not necessary, and as this chart describes, quote, will not require you to take over driving. However, level four does still have limitations and as is described in this chart, can operate the vehicle under limited conditions. In Waymo's case, one of the major limitations to their level four system is that it can only operate in very specific geographic regions, like for example, in the Metro Phoenix area where Waymo's driverless service can operate in a geofenced area covering 180 square miles. Now beyond the Phoenix area, as I mentioned previously, Waymo is expanding their driverless service to the San Francisco and Los Angeles, California markets and eventually to Austin, Texas. But even when they do service all four markets, that's a very small fraction of the United States, not to mention the world. In comparison with Tesla's system, whether you have basic autopilot, enhanced autopilot, or full self-driving, they are all classified as level two driver's assistance features. And as Tesla describes in a disclaimer on their website regarding their full self-driving technology, quote, the currently enabled features require active driver supervision and do not make the vehicle autonomous. However, despite requiring active driver supervision, Tesla's full self-driving system is far more capable than any other level two system and has all of the features that are necessary for a truly autonomous vehicle. And while the system does still make mistakes, which is why an attentive human driver is still required, it does not have the geographic limitations like Waymo's system and is able to operate nearly anywhere. While I do believe it will take Waymo quite a long time to expand out their service. Once Tesla's software is ready and regulators give their approval, Tesla's expansion should be rapid and could very well overtake Waymo almost overnight due to Tesla's approach. So with that being said, when it comes to autonomous driving technology, how does Waymo's approach compare to Tesla's? Well, as was written in this Tesla post on x.com, it is made clear that Tesla does not rely on HD maps, so Tesla doesn't have to go and make a bunch of detailed maps of an area before a Tesla vehicle can drive there. Waymo on the flip side does rely on HD maps, which according to this abstract of a research paper that is published on the Waymo website, quote, there are only a small amount of real world road topologies and geometries, which significantly limits our ability to test out the self-driving stack to generalize onto new unseen scenarios. The reason why Tesla does not need to rely on HD maps comes down to the fact that they're building a truly AI system based on Tesla vision. 
While version 11 of their software does work with a combination of code and artificial intelligence, version 12, which is not yet released, is an end-to-end -end AI system that allows the car's cameras to be able to react directly to the world it observes without the need for HD maps or a bunch of C++ code. During a demo drive of the yet to be released version 12 of Tesla's full self-driving software, which was previously live streamed on x.com, Elon Musk made it very clear multiple times referring to various actions that the car was able to perform that basically there was no specific code written that told the vehicle to take those actions. However, instead, the neural net was being trained with real world data, video and images, and the car knew how to react based on that training. Here's one example of a quote from Elon Musk during that drive. There is no line of code that says, this is a roundabout. There's nothing that says, wait X number of seconds, which is what we have in the explicit control stack of version 11. There's over 300,000 lines of C++ in the explicit control stack of version 11, and there's basically none of that in version 12. Elon Musk did give an update for their yet to be released full self-driving version 12 software in Tesla's Q3 2023 investors conference call when he said, quote, we're also seeing significant promise with FSD version 12. This is the end-to-end -end AI where it's a photon count in, controls out, or really you can think of it as there's just large midstream coming in and a tiny bitstream going out, impressing reality into a very small set of outputs, which is actually kind of how humans work. While Waymo is developing an AI system of sorts, I don't believe it's quite as robust as Tesla's, and in my opinion, they have an over-reliance on HD maps and LiDAR, and I assume that Waymo's system currently and will in the future rely on long strings of code and their HD maps will need constant updating to account for changes in the road. The next comparison that I wanna make comes down to the sensors used by each company. And this really could fall into the approach category, but I'm gonna go ahead and separate it out here. First of all, when it comes to Tesla, they primarily use cameras and their vehicles do not have LiDAR sensors installed. And in the somewhat recent past, Tesla removed ultrasonic sensors and radar sensors from their vehicles. Although radar has returned to the Model S's and X's that are equipped with hardware 4. And it appears very possible in the future that Tesla could start adding radar once again to the Model 3 and Model Y as well. But nonetheless, even if you add radar to the mix, their sensor suite is still quite simple because Elon Musk believes that just as humans are able to drive with their eyes and a brain to process the optical inputs from their eyes into actions, so a vehicle should be able to do the same with cameras and a trained neural net. After all, humans don't need built-in lasers to drive a vehicle, and in Elon's opinion, cars don't either. Back during Tesla's 2019 AI day, Elon Musk even went as far as saying, quote, LiDAR is a fool's errand. Anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. During that same event, Andre Carpathy mentioned regarding LiDAR, quote, it sidesteps the fundamental problems of visual recognition that is necessary for autonomy. It gives a false sense of progress and is ultimately a crutch. So whereas Tesla's sensor suite is quite simple, Waymo's iPACE fleet has 51 main sensors according to this Tangram Vision article. These sensors include 26 cameras, six radar sensors, five LiDAR sensors, and 14 ultrasonic sensors. This is an extremely large number of sensors that I believe adds more complexity than is necessary. Tesla's former director of artificial intelligence, Andre Carpathy, spoke at CVPR 2021, which was a virtual conference on computer vision and pattern recognition. And during his presentation, he shared the reasons why Tesla removed radar from their vehicles. Specifically, Andre mentioned, quote, the cameras are doing most of the heavy lifting in terms of the perception that you see in the car. When it came to a direct comparison of just how much better Andre believed cameras were versus radar, he mentioned, quote, vision is getting to the point where the sensor is like 100x better than, say, radar. Then if you have a sensor that is dominating the other sensor and so much better, then the other sensor is actually holding you back and is starting to attribute noise. During this event, Andre also referenced a previous tweet from Elon Musk, where Elon wrote, quote, when radar and vision disagree, which one do you believe? 
Vision has much more precision, so better to double down on vision than do sensor fusion. So what it really comes down to is with a proper neural net, cameras actually provide great data and according to Andre Carpathy, better data than radar. So if you have superior sensors feeding in data, why not just rely on those sensors alone and get rid of the rest of the sensors so you don't have to overly complicate the system. Now I do understand that Tesla may find that radar is necessary in the end, but nonetheless, they don't have all the LiDAR sensors and they don't have 26 cameras on their vehicle like Waymo has. Waymo just has an extreme number of sensors that I believe really makes their system far more complex than it has to be. With that being said, this really leads me into the next comparison that I wanna make between Tesla and Waymo, and that comes down to the cost of each of their systems. Going back to this Tangram Vision article, which revealed that Waymo's iPaces have 51 major sensors. When it comes to a cost estimate for Waymo's system, the author wrote, quote, from a cost perspective, we'd have to guess that this sensor array cost Waymo upwards of 40 to 50K for each vehicle, not including the other sensors we could not assess or the additional onboard compute, wiring harnesses, etc., required to install and run it. So based on the estimate in that article, you should be able to, at retail, buy a rear-wheel drive Model 3 for around the price that it cost Waymo to implement the sensors in the iPACE. That's pretty extreme, and this is not even taking into account that, of course, Tesla is making a profit off the rear-wheel drive Model 3 when they sell that vehicle. So Tesla's cost of building that vehicle is, of course, lower than the retail price. So the cost difference of Tesla's system versus Waymo's system is extremely different, and I believe this will make future implementation of Waymo's system beyond commercial applications impractical. At the end of the day, the simple cost-effective solution to full self-driving technology is the one that's going to win, not the complicated, expensive one. I believe this will lead to companies in the future licensing full self-driving software from Tesla because implementation will be relatively inexpensive as compared to a very expensive solution like Waymo offers. Why would anyone want to go with a forty dollars or $50,000 solution when you can go with something that's much, much cheaper? The last category of comparison that I want to cover comes down to data. In order to effectively train a neural net, you need a high volume of high quality data that includes a lot of corner cases. So when it comes to this kind of data, who has the advantage between Tesla and Waymo? Well, a lot of this comes down to the number of vehicles in each fleet. For example, beyond Tesla's large fleet of vehicles that have been collecting autopilot data over the years, Tesla's full self-driving beta launched in October of 2020 and approximately three years later, the software has driven over 500 million miles and is being used by over 400,000 users in North America. Oh, and remember that Tesla is getting a lot of this data from customers who paid for the vehicle and paid for the software. Because of the large number of Tesla vehicles on the road collecting data, their data covers many corner cases from all over the USA and many other global locations as well. In comparison, Waymo currently operates fleets in, once again, the Phoenix, Arizona area, in Los Angeles, and in San Francisco, and they also plan to expand into the Austin, Texas market as well. When it comes to the actual number of vehicles that are in Waymo's fleet, as far as I can tell, Waymo has not publicly shared the size of their fleet, but by piecing together the data that I could find, it appears like they have less than 1,000 cars in their fleet. So while Waymo with all of their sensors may have really detailed data, it's for very specific geographic locations, whereas Tesla has a much broader set of data that covers a lot more corner cases and really allows them to produce a system that should be able to operate pretty much anywhere where you put a Tesla vehicle. So really to wrap this up, while Waymo has accomplished level four autonomy before Tesla, it has some serious geographic limitations. In addition, I believe Waymo's approach will make future expansion slow, costly, and difficult. Tesla, on the other hand, doesn't have the same geographical limitations, is collecting a more diverse set of data from far more vehicles, and I believe their implementation of their full self-driving software once it comes out of beta and gets approval from regulators will be extremely quick. So because of this, in a side-by-side -side comparison, I personally believe that Tesla is the clear leader in autonomous driving technology. 
Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.